Hi everyone, in the last video I explained how to install Python and the packages and the actual uh, Python KVW program that you're looking at now and if you got that far you can see the screen running then th that's good you can uh, carry on now and learn how to use the tool. So th in this video I'm going to cover the basic usage uh, and then in further video I'll cover the more uh, uh, slightly more advanced features. Um, so the basic premise of the program is that uh, uh, it consumes uh, text files of the correct format. Now those text files are uh, the same format as the ones that we have been using for a while with both the Paranzo and the Minima program and this program will uh, actually understand both those formats and they're very similar they're basically text files as here's one I'm showing you now and you can see it's a, a list of rows and in this particular case it's a comma separated uh, uh, file the first value in each row is the BJD and the second value after the comma is the magnitude and that's all you need to do. The, uh, this, is, this is the one that would be understood by Minima and uh, the Paranzo version would be the same but the, there would be a tab instead of a uh, comma here. So that's all, that is the, those are the files that we need to have ready to use and open in this program. So as you can see the program is structured in like steps, um, select one, select the data file, uh, step two, pick left and right limits, step three, uh, actually execute the algorithm in some way, and four, um, see the results and do something with them. So it's a, a stepped thing. So the first thing to do is to use step one and use the browse button here on the right uh, to select a file. Uh, so let's have a look what should we do. I'll select this file here which is um, uh, from John in fact uh, NSVS 1426825 and um, that this one uh, is is the uh, file is the star a bigger pardon in Aquila and um, so that has now selected the file as you can see it's remembered that and the program does remember if I close the program um, it does remember the last file that was opened so when you browse again it remembers the folder that you were last using so it's quite convenient in that respect so the next thing to do is to pick left and right limits so this button here the f uh, in section 2 plot data to choose limits is the one to get started with and when you click that after having selected the file it shows you the data in the file in a nice graph and as you can see it's a really excellent uh, curve high quality uh, data with both the, the, the primary and the secondary which we don't always see but it's a very nice example and our job here is to uh, choose the range of the data that we want the KVW uh, algorithm to work on and what you can do is you can see there are two sliders there's a, a left and a right limit if I click on the left limit and I drag it across you can see that the green dashed line, which is by default sitting on the first data point, uh, you will see that will move across. And let's uh, let's bring that into here, for, exa for example. And then the same with the blue one, I'll drag that across, that's the right hand one, and I'll set that perhaps to there. So we've now selected you know, the, the, the whole of the V of the uh, of, of the dip so at this point the limits have been chosen I can either elect to just minimize this window or close this window and in fact if I close it just to show you then you'll notice that uh, well what has happened is the limits have been remembered and to prove that if I click the button again you'll see that it has remembered them and they are still there as we left them so we've now chosen our limits and the next thing to do is to run the algorithm on that data with those limits. So click the run uh, KVW, uh, Kui and Van Wooden button, click it there and what happens is you get a result and the result is in, uh, each result you run is in a row in this result window. So if I click it a few times I'm actually just rerunning exactly the same uh, file with the uh, same limits and of course what you can do is you can change the limits and run it again and you end up adding a list of results and so this result window is very useful for seeing what you've done and also being able to do things like oh perhaps delete a result so if I select this last one and delete it and I select this one I can use the delete selected and it deletes that that one okay so to look at the answer already you can see that the the BJD of the minimum is shown here and uh, so is the um, the the two indexes 
of the uh, the BJDs minus the uh, minus the big long number at the front there, and um, the the fractional part, and the error that the algorithm uh, comes up with. So also it's uh, useful to realize that if you run say Notepad, some sort of text editor or somewhere where you want to paste the results, after having run uh, and press the button, the program automatically puts the results in the clipboard. So you see all I did was paste what was in the clipboard and I, could, I, I get to extra decimal places, I get the value, I get the error and I get the, the indexes as well. So that's one way that you can get the values that you've run out of the program and into your spreadsheets or whatever you're doing to analyze the values. Okay, so that's an important thing. And then to look at just to look at it as well, you can take any of these results and you can just either press the plot selected button or just double click the row and up will pop another window that looks very similar to the first one. But this time we haven't got the sliders and it's just showing us the result. So we can see the limits that we used and we can also see a red line and the value showing, you know, the red line, which is the actual uh, plot of the uh, of the value that the algorithm came up with. OK, so so that's how you can visualize where it's come up with the answer. Sometimes, of course, it will get confused. Um, and uh, I mean, for example, if I reset the limits and then I run the algorithm and I have a look at this last result, uh, oh, in, in this case, it actually worked and it actually ignored the secondary. You can see that the blue line and the green line are using the entire, uh, you know, we, are, we haven't set limits. Uh, the whole data is being used, but the algorithm still managed to work out that that's where the minimum point is. Sometimes that isn't the case. You do have to get rid of some of the data to the side, um, depending on the shape of the data and the quality of the data. So, OK, so those are the basic stages on the basic running of the, um, the program. And in the next video, I'll cover some of these other features which are a bit more fancy. OK, thanks for listening. Bye bye.